My name is Christopher Todd Maynard, and I am 52 years old. And uh, back in the summer of 03, I was going to a dive club meeting on a motorcycle, um, and I was commuting and not raising hell, which, you know, on the bike, which is probably what I normally would have been doing. I was actually keeping it under control. And the next thing I knew, I was waking up, and it was five weeks later. I, I kind of was and wasn't with it. I was in and out for a period of time of which I'm not sure how long was it before I was truly cognizant. About six weeks. Wow. Really? Okay. It was my sister who finally got it into my head that I lost my arm and that my neck was broken. multiple cervical, cervical vertebrae and um, I was having trouble seeing and that was a hypoxic nerve injury, this lack of blood to the brain and um, I had a broken jaw too pretty severely but I didn't, I didn't know that for quite a while. And it wasn't diagnosed because there was just too much other stuff going on. You know, they're busy trying to keep me alive. So I was coming out of a coma, and my sister was in the in the uh, bedroom hovering over my bed. She told me that my arm was missing. And I didn't believe her because I could see out of my peripheral vision such as it was, that my arm was still there. It was the weirdest thing. But it, my hand just felt cold. I got through that. I had bilateral chest tubes and a broken pelvis. And I coded three times. And, you know, it was just one silly thing after another. But, um... Bottom line was, I had all this broken bone and um, what's called heterotopic ossification. And um, if you ever see a an X-ray or uh, actually an MRI is better for seeing it. It looks like a if you can picture in your mind um, the elephant man's. Um, skeletal system. Mm -hmm. That's what it looks like. It looks like kind of like all your bones have melted and run together and fused and just it's really bruised. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I found out that that's what I had. and I had uh, just severe pain from the from the get-go and I I couldn't seem to uh, figure out what what to uh, take to get out of it. A lot of meds, yeah, a lot of meds. So three, four, five total surgeries for the spinal cord stimulator. And out of all that, I ended up with infections, really subpar uh, equipment, and it really wasn't worth from what I got out of it, they they never worked right, and it was just really a hassle. I'm just back to meds, back to a lot of meds, and sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. And when they don't, they really don't. On a daily basis, I my walking around pain is around a 
four. That's just what I live with every day, and I, I expect that. Um, during episodes of episodic pain, usually around seven or eight, and, uh, you know, that's from day to day. And then that makes it impossible to carry on any semblance of a real life. I mean, how do, you, how do you plan anything? But at best, the best relief I get then is sleep. You know, I, how many hours a week do I sleep? Out of a, out of a typical day, 14, 16. Those are my relief days. I have two different kinds of pain. I have phantom limb pain which is what I'm trying to get eliminated with the ketamine infusions here. I can kind of control the muscular pain. I have no control over the phantom limb pain. It's electrical kind of pain, it feels like. Yeah. The best thing I can equate it to in, in my mind is that if you can imagine putting your thumb on an electrical, electrical circuit and just leaving it there and until you scream and stop and it just goes away you know, instantaneously on off and you never know there's no there's no precursor it's usually uh, the onset is usually rapid and um, the does stop is usually quick too, but but you never know. And it, the only thing is, you kind of one thing that does give you an indication is that once it starts, it's usually going to be around for a while. Sometimes, um, sometimes there are things that happen that that make it. Uh, make me cringe because I kind of have an indication that it's going to come. And if I sneeze real bad, that's one thing. That'll, that'll start it just immediately. And if uh, I go over a real bad bump on the road, a car, anything jarring, um, you know, swinging a hammer, and just Other than that, I just, sometimes it's nothing. I started ketamine last Tuesday. It seemed like I had a good day last week. My muscular pain was down, and it seemed like my um, it seemed like my phantom pain was being controlled. Down to a one. Down to a one. Yeah. The first time in a long time. We came to the Florida Spine Institute initially because in the last 13 years I've tried all different kinds of uh, therapies like mirror therapy and all different kinds of medications and um, some stuff I don't even believe in just out of desperation and it's been kind of a why not attitude and um, there we found along the way that there are a lot of physicians in Florida that don't even provide services like this like ketamine infusion and uh, if I've read some of the research and it looks promising to me, and uh, I was lucky enough to find Dr. Hannah here in St. Pete at the prompting of another physician, and uh, so far it's been a, uh, the results have been promising, and I'm feeling quite optimistic. 
not even halfway through yet. And it, it looks better than anything I've, I've done so far.